is Kurt Benkert. He was drafted in 2018 by the Atlanta Falcons. He's also played for the Green Bay Packers and a short stint with the 49ers. And today we're hiring Kurt as GM of his former team, the Green Bay Packers. Kurt Benkert, what's good, my guy? How you doing? What's up, man? Doing well, how are Bro, you? Bro, I am honestly so excited to do this with you. I cannot wait. <laughs> Take the Packers. <laughs> To the bourbon bowl baby <laughs> the big one that's gonna be awesome dude this is a team uh, this is a team in need of a rebuild at least as far as madden goes defense is spectacular offense is really really bad it's in a bad spot yeah they they're really lean and really young on offense and we're gonna need to do a little bit of work there to make sure they can compete right now because we can't waste these <laughs> solid defensive years on this team. bro when you were in the game did you ever go in franchise and just juice the hell out of your stats oh dude 100 <laughs> they had me so weak but they, like, had, they had, had like remember? i couldn't even throw slants <laughs> i was like a 58 or 59 Yo. one year there was a year where i was like mid 60s okay there you go but like you were better off putting a receiver a quarterback <laughs> and just like scrambling handing the ball off to me <laughs> hey well i guess like the core of this rebuild is the quarterback room and i think the last time you were on the packers was it aaron Rodgers, jordan love and you was that all it was yes Damn. That was it, dude. That 2021 season. That's crazy. And we were so close. I know. But it was a hell of a year. I know. Year. That's sad, man. Do you still think about that? Dude, I, in my soul, believed I was getting a ring on my <sighs> finger for sitting on the bench that year. That would so sick, like, dude. Oh, that was Would not be able to tell me anything. I'm sorry, man. Hey, it was a hell of a run, though. It was. And then I thought I was going to get one of the 49ers last year, and then I got cut. Dude, now that would have been sick. Bitter. But listen, they didn't get it anyway. Oh, dude. Exactly. Wait a second, dude. When you saw like, 49ers think, QBs dropping like flies, were you like, wait a minute? Dude, I I had my phone so ready because I just was like, they're bringing me back. Right. When I got released, they brought in... Uh, so. Jacob Eason had gotten released from Carolina. Maybe mm -hmm. he was there for a little bit. And the 49ers had had like a high draft grade on him three or four years ago yeah. whenever he was coming out. And so when I was with them, I was there for like three months and they brought me in one morning and they were like, hey, like a guy that we wanted to draft that we missed on uh, just became available. We can get him and we want to see what he looks like and kind of put him through the ringer a little uh -huh. bit. We're going to release you. They only had him there for like three weeks and then they cut him. And then I was expecting to get a call back once the injuries happened. And then they never called anyone. Yeah, so wait, they what did they do? Two guys hoping. What did they do? They didn't dude, do anything, they, did they? Now that I'm trying to think about it. They literally did nothing. Well, I guess, you know yeah. what? That brings us full circle because the biggest part of this yeah. rebuild is our starting quarterback right now, Jordan Love, is a 72 overall and a normal dev. And the first thing I would do in a Madden rebuild is I'd say, are we building around Jordan Love or are we trading Jordan Love and either picking somebody up now or targeting somebody in the draft? So as GM, you got to tell mm. us what we're doing here with Jordan Love. So as GM, we're going to keep with the path. We're going to have Jordan oh, be our guy, go. but we're going to we're going to rebuild around him, dude. He needs some help. I love that. There's some there's some cap moves that got to be made. Mm -hmm. Some reunites with old teammates that Ooh, need to happen. Okay. And then <laughs> we're also going to keep our eyes on the horizon for... You know, maybe like a third to fifth round guy that maybe could be like a like a Dak kind of guy. Oh, just in case. so you are gonna pick up a safety quarterback? Just in case. you know what's funny you know, about like that because Jordan Jordan Love was the safety quarterback to Rodgers, and that pissed off Rodgers. Yeah. I remember that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You see, the thing is, Jordan doesn't have a place to be pissed off right now because he's got to earn it. That's true. You know, three years of waiting, and like it's just dude. Time. He's got a good but, core though. Like he will progress really well. Eighty one speed, eighty five excel, ninety one throw power is really good. We just gotta put him in a position to win and he will get really good dude that's it get the momentum with early completions like put him in a system that he's comfortable hell in. yeah no we're gonna we're gonna spread the ball out we're definitely not gonna be this old school ground and pound play action okay team. yeah we need to put him in a situation that he's gonna excel Ooh, in. Ooh, i like that, that. like an andy reed offense. dude wait no way are you serious i already switched the playbook to kansas city that is dude, so there crazy you See, just i'm said telling that. you yeah dude so in, in madden dude, so uh, in madden simulation like i'm sure you already know this but it's super important what your playbook is in kansas city chiefs is like all pass so i literally already switched it to that yep. let's go wait that's fire well the thing is we're going kc and we have absolute well not no tight end but the starter right now is josiah deguara 26 year old no 68 way. overall we do have the rookie no. right is luke musgrave a rookie yeah he's a rookie we so but josiah josiah is not the guy josiah's a he's like a fullback hybrid tight end hybrid just look like a guy. big boy he's not your we need like we almost trade. We need a Darren Waller. Yeah. We need a, a Kyle P Kyle Pitts. Like we need one of those guys that's gonna go be a guy. Mm -hmm. That's and and every young quarterback loves his tight end. So got to go. Great get a minds guy. think alike. Okay. Well, that means we are gonna probably have to unload somebody out of the players that you know are good and will be worth something. There's Aaron Jones. There's David Bakhtiari. And on defense, there's a ton of studs on defense. Jair Alexander, yeah. Kenny Clark, Rashawn Gary. So if we're gonna trade for a tight end, 
Who are we trading? I think we're going to have to trade Aaron Jones. He's got an above average cap hit. He's a great guy, but your personality doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're GM, and man. And we don't care. They don't care. So <laughs> we're going to go get a stud with him. We're going to unload some of that contract, and we're going to build for the future. This is genius. We got, we got it's it's Kansas get it City offense, dude. We don't need a running back. Exactly. Wait, you're so right. Dude, you got a Dillon's new one every year. Off. Dylan's going to get those, those end zone, like goal line carries. And besides that, we're just slinging the rock. I love it. Okay, good call. I got to I gotta put down my GM checklist. So we're trading. Trading Aaron Jones. And we're getting a tight end. Who are your top tight end targets? Right now, I love Kyle Pitts. I love Darren Waller. Kyle Pitts. And I think for this, for this, Kelsey's a little too old. He's going to be tough to pull away from. I anyways. agree. I think maybe like a sneaky value pick is Everett from the Chargers. I don't know what, I don't know what he looks like in He Madden is right a now, sneaky think, value pick, but low key, we could get him without moving anybody, which is the good yeah. news. Like he'd be so, really easy to pick up. You know, we could go two tight end sets throw people off Ooh, dude because we could i swear we could get everett for like a third rounder although it does have him with a yeah. pre-existing injury right now. it does yeah but it's not too big let of a deal go. i can go full let me go check i can go full nfl quick. and look at all the tight ends i'm not gonna i won't oh, make the yeah. trade right now but i just want to know who you're thinking about because they're all yeah. possible yeah kyle pitts is Let's good see. kyle pitts is x factor this madden so he progresses like crazy dude like a mad like i could see kyle pitts and Jordan Love being like old school Philip Rivers, Antonio Gates. Jordan vibes. Love, I like it, dude. And they're like they're about the same dude, age. I think that's the one. I we could, yeah. we could definitely dude, that's, about. They might be roommates, honestly. By year there two. we go. I so saw I like to hear. Okay, cool. And then yeah, let's uh, let's go there. We can do that. And then I just gotta ask you what else you want to think about this lineup. So I mean, on paper, this defense probably doesn't need anything other than the fact that we're like we're almost so good on defense that we could get more offense for it. That's the only thing I could think yeah, of. That's honestly, Honestly, I'm thinking the same thing. We have some DNs that are studs. I know. Well, the, the one thing that I'm thinking of is Packers drafted Lucas Van Ness. He's going to yep. end up being really good. Oh, well, I guess that, that begs this question. What is the Super Bowl timeline? When are we winning a Super Bowl with Jordan Love? What's your goal? Our goal is two to three ooh, years. Oh, quick Super Bowl. Let's go. It's a, it's a, it's a two to three years. We're... But we're gonna leverage this defense. We're gonna be like the like the early two thousand Ravens. Oh, I like, like that. Nobody even you couldn't really name anybody from their offense, but you got Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, those guys. That's nasty. That's squad. what we're looking for. You know, something else I was thinking about too with this this defense. What's the deal with swapping defensive schemes? Um, so it we're, won't we're do. A three, it won't do right anything now. bad. It would work. We would we would be able to do it. I think the reason it's, it works well right now is just because the backers are so much stronger than the D line. That's what I'm. Yeah. The one thing that I was thinking is if we go go to a to a four three mm -hmm. which i'm biased to from the 49ers system. i like it you put rashawn gary at end you put van ness at end and not at this outside linebacker gary position Ed. then you have quay walker devondre campbell playing maybe mike and sam and then we just need that will position but like i think that can thin out the d line a little bit and let those big boys just play big boy ball and let gary and van ness be our pass dude rushers. this is genius kind of oh my god have you done a rebuild before dude, i'm just look back in the day <laughs> before i became good at football i was a madden guru at 10 years Dude, old. Dude, this is sick. Hell yeah, we're doing that. Okay, cool. Well, then, I, love it. I guess, is the, is your idea then that once Van Ness and Gary are edge rushing that we trade one of these backers or do we just keep, we almost have a perfect yes. backer core because Devondre Campbell, Quay I Walker, think, and then Preston, oh, Preston Smith's a little older. Not sure how much value he'll have. Yeah, Pre Preston Smith is an edge guy more than anything, but I think we could even, I don't know what we could get for him trade-wise, but I could also see a world where Gary and Van Ness become left end, mm -hmm. right end. The, the, what exists now is right end D tackle left end all get squished together into these two defensive tackle yep. roles and maybe there's a trade to be had for an outside linebacker or a safety that buffs the defense and gives it a little bit more totally dude they, they got hired as GM holy shit this is fun dude, I'm, this I'm, is I'm, I'm just saying man like I'm excited they, they gotta they gotta look at the Twitter takes lately we've been yeah, on fire right? this is such a good defense I think I don't think your two to three year Super Bowl is out of the question by any means especially if we're willing to go all in with these draft picks and the other totally. thing we gotta talk about is is some cap space and the David Bakhtiari debacle. he is expensive and very expensive. I know there's a place he wants to be. We all know it. Oh, it's you're gonna, with the you're Jets. trading him. Oh, he wants to go reunite We're with Rodgers? We're trading his ass. <laughs> he, he wants it, dude. He wants it. Who do we try? And we might even see them in the Super Bowl Who do we year. try to get from the Jets for Bakhtiari? I also think we could trade for one of their draft picks and then leverage the draft pick to get something else from a different team. Okay, hear me out. David Bakhtiari for Garrett Wilson. <laughs> and milk as much as we can get out of that. 
Oh my god, yeah, I love that. I absolutely love that. And Yo, it, it fulfills it fulfills sending Rogers to the Jets with this young crowd oh, yeah. that he's excited to play with, and then snatching the soul out of that immediately. I I, I love it because listen, Rogers already got Alan Lazard. He already got That's who insane. he wanted. He's got a few of his guys. He's got his <laughs> Randall Cobb, Alan Lazard. Let's go steal the young guy. He really said yes. And Garrett to the Jets Wilson is gonna for. be absolutely insane. Garrett Wilson, an elite yeah. tight end, Jordan. In love we have a really depleted Ooh. offensive line though that's for sure that's true so i guess my, my question true. then is what is your target for the draft so i think the first thing that we need to do is we're gonna need to sure up the left side of the line i think we have a good left guard already let's go check and see according to madden what they think so like. elton jenkins is excellent left guard myers yep. and runyon Runyon's okay, but not getting any better. So right tackle, center, and then with Bakhtiari out, we'll have Nijman in at left tackle, and he's really trash too. So mainly it'd be our tackles are the worst. After that would be center. Ooh, okay, what is Becton with the Jets? Uh, he's young and he's good. We could get him we and could, Garrett Wilson for Bakhtiari. That's, might have to like, that's what might I'm have thinking. to put some draft picks in there, but I could see it. I think that's I think that's kind of the move we gotta make. Yeah, cause then, cause then you- He's a 75 overall. It's like, like we should be able to get him and he's got a he's got some development. Mm -hmm. yeah? He should. He's younger. Yeah. yeah, we should get him and Garrett Wilson for Bakhtiari, throw in some draft picks, and then maybe look out there across the league to see if we can get uh, maybe a new right tackle. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we'll have Christian Watson, we'll have Romeo Dobbs, and we'll have Garrett Wilson as our receivers. Shit. And then we'll have Kyle Pitts. Dude, I don't know. This is pretty, a nasty squad, nasty. dude. I'm excited. My only question then, see, my boy Jaden Reed went to Michigan State. All right? Mm, and he's the 73 yeah. overall rookie who's going to develop quick. He now does not have a home on this team. So should we try and trade him and get something out of him? Or is he just going to be a depth guy on the Packers? Because we mm. could just put him in for uh, Dobbs. Because Romeo Dobbs, I don't know how you say his name. But he is yeah, Dobbs. Dobbs. Okay. Yep. He's a normal depth. And Jaden Reed is going to pop out as star depth. They're both super young. Oh, let's Jaden Reed will progress a little faster. I, I think we get Jaden Reed the nod at number at the number three spot with Garrett Wilson there, and put Dobbs as a depth guy. All right, but hey, he can he can so return kicks do. or something, you know? Yeah, dude, I you're can. kind of a nasty GM. Wait a minute. I'm so excited just, to see this. Just saying, man. Hey, well, you know, dude. in the old days, in the old days, they used to move outside linebackers to DN, and it used to buff their ratings. If that still happens, I wouldn't be shocked to see Rashawn Gary as like a 90 plus. He'll be a monster, and he's got the abilities too. He's gonna be really, really good at that. Oh, dude. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking for him to be the staple on our team, like OG Terrell Suggs. <laughs> I'm so excited for this, bro. Hey, well, thank you yeah. so much for helping us. I'm not gonna bore you and make you sit here for four hours for the sim, but when this Packers squad is fully assembled and we go and win that Super Bowl, I'm giving you a call so I can let you know what happened, all right? Look, man, the phone's gonna be on. <laughs> I'll be ready for it. Hey, seriously, bro, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna get to work. Awesome, see you soon. So rather than having Kurt sit with us here for four hours and do all the boring parts, I'm just gonna call him after we've executed his plan as GM. So let's get to work. I'm switched to a 4-3. He wants Rashawn Gary. Rashawn Gary is an 89. He is the exact same overall at right end and I, honestly he's an incredible right end 93 power moves 86 speed 89 excel let's make sure he has the right abilities i'm gonna give him goal line stuff under pressure and double or nothing and the young buck lucas van ness he's a 6'5 linebacker he's kind of built like trayvon walker he's got 86 speed 92 excel and he has 80 power moves he, he truly is an edge rusher van ness is actually a higher overall dude ben kurt is a dog because he was totally right rashawn gary's at right end kenny clark's at D tackle. In the middle is Devondre Campbell. Of course, we got Preston Smith at right outside linebacker. And then we move Quay to left outside linebacker. And we don't have to trade for a backer at all. This is the absolute perfect backer set here. I'll make him left outside linebacker just in case. Not sure it matters. But keep in mind the players on this team. Quay Walker is young. He has incredible Madden stats. I know he's going to progress super, super well. Offensively, Kurt does want us to keep and progress Jordan Love as our franchise quarterback. This is one of his former teammates. Of course, he's got to do it. Jordan Love's 24. If I was rebuilding the Packers, I don't know if I would stick with Jordan Love. The only issue I have is I think it's going to be difficult to get his normal dev up to star dev. If he plays well enough, I think he will do it. And we do plan on trading our two offensive superstars, Aaron Jones and David Bakhtiari. The offensive line is looking beat, but we're 
also going to try and get a star tight end as well as Garrett Wilson. And we'll be reuniting David Bakhtiari with the New York Jets. This is actually realistic because I know Aaron Rodgers wants him. What's also awesome about this is the number one team need for the Jets is a left tackle. Now, you guys have recommended that every time I'm GM, I need to lowball the shit out of the CPU. Garrett Wilson, their star wide receiver. Makai Becton, 75 overall, 24 years old. And their round one pick for a 31-year-old left tackle. There is no way they accept this, right? Like, there's no way I'm selling right now. They don't like that trade. I'm not shocked. I'm going to take the round one pick out. Do they accept this? They definitely don't. Looks like we're going to have to sweeten this deal for sure. I'm not willing to trade away my 2024 round one pick 15. But Kurt did say he wants a Super Bowl within two to three years. So I really don't mind giving up my 2026 picks. Let's see what a 2026 third and fourth round pick will do to move this trade. I'm adding my 2026 first round and I'm keeping in the fourth round. It's orange, baby. This really sells our 2026 draft. We lose our first and our second round. But honestly, the players we're getting are both young players who will develop. This isn't too bad of a trade. David Bakhtiari, round one and round two of the 2026 NFL draft. Jets don't know is the Packers are gonna be a super team by 2026. So these picks are worth nothing. Come on! Oh, we're so close. I added 2025 round six and seven. Finally, it goes through. Here's what we had to give up. We had to give up a haul of picks. My first and second in 2026. My 2025 second. And in 2024, we have two second round picks. I gave up the second round pick. That was not the Green Bay Packers. The good news is I don't think we'll play very well this year, 2024. So our 2024 pick should be good. And damn, I just realized why that trade was so hard. Becton is a superstar. I thought he was star. Damn. 6'7", 360. He's 24 years old. Oh my God, he's going to be insane. Garrett Wilson's only star. I didn't know that either. I figured he'd be superstar. No question. He's offensive rookie of the year. Wide receiver one is Garrett Wilson. Wide receiver two is Christian Watson. And up to wide receiver... Receiver three is Jaden Reed. Honestly, I kind of talked our GM into this. But Jaden Reed's my boy. Jaden Reed's Michigan State. He's also hidden dev. 91 speed, 92 excel. Dobbs is, is actually a little faster. But the fact that Jaden Reed will come out as star means he will progress a lot faster. So this isn't like, it may be biased, but it's still a good call. Now, the next thing we wanted to do was trade Aaron Jones and get ourselves a superstar tight end. And GM Ben Kurt really wanted Kyle Pitts. And I definitely agree with that call. I don't know if he knew this or not. But Kyle Pitts is the most undeserved X-Factor I've ever seen. I love Kyle Pitts. Why is he a superstar X-Factor when the Offensive Rookie of the Year, who actually was insane, Garrett Wilson, is star? I have no idea. But since he's superstar X-Factor, he is going to progress like crazy. He's only 22. And he's already got 91 speed, 93 acceleration, 88 spec. It also does mean the Falcons aren't just going to hand him over. Not to mention the Falcons have B. John Robinson, but they still have decent interest in Aaron Jones. Trying this trade straight up is surprisingly close to working. It's a done deal. Kyle Pitts is a Green Bay Packer. I certainly wouldn't chalk this up in the ultra realistic rebuild category, but the Atlanta Falcons wanted Aaron Jones. My 2025 third and fourth, my 2026 fifth and sixth. We may be losing our draft picks, but we're retaining our first and second rounds for the most part. I'm not that upset by this at all. So let's go back to our GM checklist here. GM Ben Kurt wanted a 4-3 defense with Rashawn Gary and Lucas Van Ness as edge rushers. He got it. He wanted to trade Bakhtiari and get Garrett Wilson and Beckton. He got it. But it did cost us a lot of draft capital. Our GM also wanted an elite tight end option for Jordan Love, specifically Kyle Pitts. And we granted that wish too. Kyle Pitts is our new tight end. We were also hoping to shore up the strong safety position, which is very weak on this defense, as well as shoring up our tackle and interior offensive line. I can't say we've done that yet but we can absolutely target that in the draft. Ronnie Cooper is currently our best scout. He's our three-star. His primary expertise is DN. I'm sorry, Ronnie, but you are jobless. Rachel Bridges, though. Unfortunately, we can't fire her because we have a diversity quota and we have to hire women. Bunch of stupid nonsense, so she's staying. Rachel Bridges' position expertise is interior offensive line. We just so happen to need that. Yeah, you know what? I'm firing her anyway. Woo!
The actual best scout for us is Willie Rowe. He specializes in interior O-line and tackles. We could use either, so we might as well get two birds stoned. And our two-star scout just needs to do safeties. Rowan Moore will do safeties, and this is actually also perfect. GM Benkert said we should look for like a third or fifth round quarterback just in case, and his secondary expertise is quarterbacks. Willie Rofe will be our national scout, and Rowan Moore, Southeast. Taking a look at the prospect, I honestly imagine our first round draft pick will land somewhere in the middle. I don't think we'll be that bad because this defense can absolutely carry us, but I don't think we'll make the playoffs. Right down the middle is left tackle. There's actually a very deep tackle class. 11, 12, and 13 are all tackles, which we could definitely use. We've got a strong safety out of UCF at 18. Another left tackle, Jeremy Philbin. Why does that sound like something I know? Daryl, what is Daryl Philbin? What the fuck is that? Is that from the office? Oh, it's Daryl. This is Daryl's brother. Yo, he low-key kind of looks like Daryl too. And as we go deeper, if we happen to do incredible, it would honestly be pretty bad. As I look deep in this draft class, 26 is a center. We could use a center. But D-tackle. Nope. D-tackle. Nope. Left end. Don't need it. Don't need it. Don't need a DB. Free safety, Eric Bowers. I guess we could technically move him to strong safety, but it'll also depend on what our scouting reveals. But overall, I'm very happy with how this class looks, and it might just land perfectly for us. I'm going to set our season goal of seven wins. I think that's very realistic. We do have a pretty tough schedule. I just really like this defense. I think this defense kind of carries. And as I say that, I think the only player I didn't click on and talk about is Jair Alexander. Jair Alexander, to me, is a top three corner in the league. Not sure if I can confidently call him the best, but he's insane. His stats are so good. And he's 26, so I'm really excited to continue to play with Jair Alexander. One important thing that we have to do before we start this season is make sure that Garrett Wilson is our slot-wide receiver. Slot-wide receiver, especially in Chiefs playbook, but in pretty much all playbooks, gets a ton of love. Right now, it's Jaden Reed. I wouldn't have hated that. But I'll make sure it's Garrett Wilson, and backup will be Jaden Reed. Oh, I think I think Garrett Wilson and Kyle Pitts are going to have some big seasons. I, I would actually like to tank this season. I would very much like to tank this season, but that would be cheating. I obviously can't do that. Year one with GM Ben Kurt. Let's see what we got. Coach Matt LaFleur was on the money. I wanted seven wins. We got seven wins. The NFC North. I've never seen this happen in a Madden sim. The Bears win the NFC North. Lions are 7-10. Packers are 7-10. 6-11. The losing record Bears are headed to the playoffs. I swear if they get through them, I will be so mad. Although this does work out, we get a better draft pick because of this. And the Bears are the four seed with an eight and nine record. And they're taking on the Saints. What? Taking a look around the league, Joe Burrow leads the league in passing yards. Mahomes crushes in touchdowns, though. And it's not even close. 50 and 6. Jordan Love finishes ninth in passing yards. Chiefs offense plus elite wide receiver tight end combo is a lethal duo. His completion percentage, not great. In fact, it's worse than every quarterback above him and many of the ones below him. His TD to interception ratio isn't spectacular either, but it is better than Trevor Lawrence's. On the ground, Saquon led the league and the Aaron Jones we traded away actually got used a ton by the Falcons. AJ Dillon went for 821 yards and six touchdowns. Nothing impressive. Our number one receiver was Kyle Pitts. I just kind of thought Garrett Wilson would outperform him. Pitts goes for a thousand and six touchdowns. Garrett Wilson, almost 1,008 touchdowns. And Jaden Reed was shockingly close to Garrett Wilson. Almost the exact same in receptions, yards. Garrett Wilson just found Pater a little more often with five more touchdowns. Christian Watson even had five touchdowns. So all three of these receivers are going to develop well, but Kyle Pitts is kind of the standout here. Defensively, Devondre Campbell leads in tackles. Quay Walker close behind, and then Rudy Ford behind that. Rudy Ford with four interceptions. We were talking down on our strong safety, and he played great. Rasul Douglas with four, Jair with three. Interesting. Kenny Clark had nine and a half sacks. Rashawn Gary had eight. Big season for him. Devontae Wyatt had four. Van Ness, an underwhelming season. Was really hoping he'd get more TFLs or sacks to potentially, you know, win something, but he's certainly not winning Defensive Rookie of the Year with those stats. Bears with a first-round exit. I can sleep tonight. And, ooh, GM Benkert's 
former team, the Niners, are in the Super Bowl against the Bengals. And in Super Bowl 58, the Bengals get their first ever ring. Joe Burrow wins MVP. Mahomes gets NFL MVP. Josh Downs is Rookie of the Year. And Defensive Rookie of the Year is Byron Young. Before we consider signing anyone in free agency, I want to see about development. I was kind of hoping that Garrett Wilson would go up to superstar, but we have three star wide receivers and they appear to have progressed at least a little bit morale is a little low around the squad but jordan love is up to a technically a 76 overall so he went up four overalls this year runyon's looking good becton is looking a little a little upset about the year kyle pitts is a 93 overall and musgrave is just chilling defensively we've got ourselves another superstar x factor so rashawn gary regresses in his dev trait, superstar down to star you really like to see those abilities on rashawn gary but kenny clark monster now a superstar x factor and we got to make sure he has the best abilities right now he's got inside stuff we'll also give him goal line stuff and run stopper same with kyle pitts i want to make sure he has the best abilities i'm gonna give him route tech bruiser and deep out elite well seeing everything there my top targets in free agency is a strong safety to replace rudy ford and a left tackle or center it's funny that kurt was talking about picking up gerald everett because he is available in free agency, but he's pretty expensive. He's already 30 years old. We're just going to let the rookie Luke Musgrave do his thing. There is a pretty nice strong safety available. That's Deshaun Elliott out of Texas. He's normal dev, 27 years old, but he has decent interest in being a Packer already. I'm going to give him a player-friendly deal, and I can pick up a center, Ryan Kelly, is interested hopefully a two-year deal because i'd actually like oh we don't have the salary cap room to make this offer oh no all i can give ryan kelly is a one year i'm okay giving him a one year though because if it means jordan love can have an even bigger season i'm cool with it i would have liked to pick up a tackle but the good thing about zach tom is zach tom is actually pretty young he's a shitty left tackle but he can definitely progress we did lose john runyon in free agency though so royce newman's our new right guard we definitely we have to draft o-line we literally have to draft o-line that'll save us some money too because we are broke and we cannot afford to pay a superstar left tackle. not to mention we lost rudy ford in free agency too so we definitely needed deshaun elliott so season one <clears throat> Season one, we lose John Runyon. Offensive line is not looking too good. And team morale is low. We do sign Deshaun Elliott in free agency. And Kenny Clark is upgraded to a superstar X Factor. We also got Ryan Kelly in free agency. So a little bolster to the center position. I'm looking to draft either a left tackle or a right guard. All right, let's kick off the NFL draft. We are round one. Pick 11. I'm looking for the best offensive lineman that I can get. Previous pick was Joe Agnew. There's still four quarterbacks on the board. And I have 100% scouted all of them. But it's Jordan Love's season. So I can't take one of these guys. Potentially one of them will fall to me on my second round pick. So I could hang on to that. There are two tackles here. There's Alexander Hicks, Matt Cook. But here's the thing. Matt Cook has excellent run blocking stats. I don't need run blocking. His pass blocking is a C. Alexander Hicks pass blocking, C to F. Now, Stefan Pete has a B pass block. But you know what's funny? The same guy we were talking about earlier, Jeremy Philbin out of Alabama, 6'7", 320. He's a pass protector left tackle, which is actually what I want the most for Jordan Love. So this might be a reach. There are technically three tackles above Jeremy Philbin. And his bench press reps are absolutely horrible. So his strength might not be very good. That is a little scary. But what I like the most is A, pass block, A to C, run block, A, awareness. I think Jeremy Philbin's going to be a stud. And you know what? His strength is not that bad. It's 78 You'd probably prefer a little bit more out of a tackle, but A pass block power, A pass block, A to C pass block finesse. This guy was built to defend Jordan Love. Jeremy Philbin's our first round pick. Our next pick is round two, pick 16. Now that I see that, I think we, I might have actually traded the Packers pick. I don't know. Maybe I fumbled the bag on that. Next pick I'm going to take is actually a strong safety. We did just sign Deshaun Elliott, but I really like this guy. And potentially we could move Deshaun Elliott if he progresses or is good. But he's the fastest strong safety. He has the highest vertical jump. Second in broad, second in three cone drill. So I think his intangibles are going to be good. My concern is that he's 5'10". He's pretty short for a strong safety, but his hit power is A to C. Player notes, he's a physical player who delivers bone-crushing hit. I'm taking a strong safety here. Henry Lamb. He's normal dev. 
Darn it. But he's 91 speed, 91 excel. That might not have been the right call. Maybe I should have gone with a guard here. But I'm excited to have him. We have a pretty... Oh, dude, a guard just got taken. We have round three pick 11 here. I'm going to take a guard if there's any available. Damn, a guard literally just got taken. That is such a bummer. Right here, we're picking up Antoine Hardison. Left guard out of Notre Dame. Second round was a whiff, but third round... Hidden dev that is at least a star on our left guard draft pick. 83 strength. 82 acceleration is shockingly good for a guard. He has a pass block finesse, a pass block power. He's a pass blocking guard. Oh my God, let's go. I did. I honestly didn't even notice that until right now. And our GM did ask us to pick up a quarterback if there's one available. These quarterbacks do not look good, but Parker Allen out of Alcorn State. He's the best guy available here. He's a potential UDFA, but listen. I said I was going to get a quarterback, so we'll get a quarterback. 80 speed, 87 throw power, 85 excel. We got to make sure Jordan Love knows he's not safe quite yet. The most important part of a rebuild, the draft recap. Ooh, Philbin's a monster. Jeremy Philbin is a 77 overall. Let's see those stats, big boy. Jeremy Philbin. Now, he has a huge first round pick. 83 pass block power, 82 finesse, 86 pass block. That's insanely good. His run blocking is horrible. 74, 73, 71. Lead blocks, all right. Impact blocking is all right. 79, 79. This dude's a beast. Let's go, Jeremy Philbin. Honestly, there's a chance he's superstar too, but we'll have to see. We know for a fact that Henry Lamb is normal dev, and he's a 73 overall. So this wasn't the best pick. Luckily, Antoine Hardison is at least star, and he's a 74 overall, so he's awesome. Parker Allen's a 64. That's a whiff. We kind of knew it was a whiff, but we said we'd get a quarterback. James Bartow, free safety. Nothing great there. Harry Dickinson. You're kidding me. That is not his generated name. Well, we drafted the center. 65 overall. And then Miles Ramsey. Philbin is awesome, man. I'm really excited about him. All right, headed it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Philbin. Oh my God. I just simmed through the preseason. Jeremy Philbin is a superstar. Oh my God. That was a nasty pick. Holy shit. We got to like... I, it's not generational. You know, the generational guys are 81, superstar X Factor. But holy shit, that is a huge... Dude, David Bakhtiari who, bro? Jeremy Philbin's that guy. I feel bad for Zach Tom, but he just really doesn't have a place on this team anymore because Elton Jenkins is great. Ryan Kelly's a free agency signing. And then Hardison is actually still hidden dev. I think I forgot to start him. Yeah, zero snaps. I forgot to start him. Damn. It's week one of the 2025 season. My goal is to make the playoffs. I don't really know if we can. I think the biggest thing in our way is actually Jordan Love right now. I hate to say it, but he's only a 76 overall. He's still normal. Dev was really hoping he'd get a boost. But damn, did we reshape this offensive line for him? Philbin's already a superstar. Hardison, 74, at least star. And Garrett Wilson's a hard 89 overall. We got Christian Watson and Jaden Reed at 79. Watson at 80. So he's got, he's got all the weapons in the world. Kyle Pitts is insane. We got two X-Factors on defense, but we lose Rashawn Gary's abilities, unfortunately. And we got the rookie, normal dev, Henry Lamb, chilling at our backup strong safety. Oh, Barto. Did you see that? Our free safety Barto, the like fifth round pick, was actually hidden dev. Shit. I'm going to sim to mid-season because I do need to set my focus scouting. I actually forgot to do that in year one, and that's why we were 100% on quarterbacks, but not on the positions we needed. I, I think I might... What do I scout, though? What position at this point? Maybe we get a linebacker. Preston Smith's kind of mid. Devondre Campbell's getting old. Quay Walker is going to be the only guy. Hey, at mid-season, the Packers have a winning record. The Vikings and the Bears are trash. But the Lions are 5-2. and two, So NFC North could be tough. We've got a weekly award on somebody. It goes to Razul Douglas for his two interceptions. Nice. Let's see if we ever got another one. No, that was actually our only Packers. That was actually the only one. All right. Let's sim to the playoffs. Packers could really make the playoffs here in year two. I don't think that two to three years... Is that unrealistic? This is a good team. Hey, I guess this is good for the upcoming draft. But damn, the Lions just snuck past us. They go nine and eight. We went eight and nine. The hope, the hope though, is that somebody named Jordan Love. Ah, damn it. Dude, I really wanted Jordan Love to progress to star dev. He does not, but 
Here's the good news. Our tackles are incredible. Hardison is star. He's all the way up to 78. Kara Wilson's a 93, but he's still, he's not a superstar. Honestly, it's just another good year for the Packers. We didn't do too much, but we still have our first round pick. So the question is, who do we draft? Or who do we sign in free agency? Um, Ryan Kelly's on a one-year deal. So Kelly's out of here after this year. I think I pick up an outside linebacker. Van Ness and Rashawn Gary are doing great as they are. Our DBs are great. Darnell Savage is sick. And Deshaun Elliott's been really good and we have Henry Lamb who we already drafted. Devondre Campbell's getting older. Preston Smith keeps getting worse. He's a 74. So really I'm looking for a guy to replace Preston Smith. I'm also going to make a D-tackle adjustment. I'm going to make Devontae Wyatt D-tackle. So Devontae Wyatt is now our starting D-tackle too. That's much better. We're at, eight, dude, we're at 87 overall. This is a crazy team. I don't I don't even know how we missed the playoffs. This is a very good. Whoa, whoa, wait, that, but, that, but, that. Jordan Love. We didn't make. How did we not make the playoffs? Jordan Love led the league in passing yards. Wait a minute. Did I see that right? Oh my God. Jordan Lee. Jordan Love led the league. Actually, it's not even surprising because we went eight and nine. So we're in a ton of close games where we were passing a ton. But take a look at this man. 33 touchdowns, 26 interceptions. So he was kind of chucking some mallards up there. Whereas you look at Dak and Mahomes and Joe Burrow, who all had a lot of yards, but much better completion, much less interceptions but look who's getting up here Bryce Young 23 14 4,000 yards nice on the ground it was another underwhelming year for AJ Dillon but take a look at the touchdowns he was fifth in the league in touchdowns fantasy workhorse not bad Garrett Wilson fucking boy absolutely dominated the league he did not eclipse a thousand rushing yards in that first season and now he leads the league chris olave close behind cooper cup jamar chase brandon Ayuk. where does kyle pitts fall did kyle pitts regress a little bit this season Ooh, i don't see him so kyle pitts Jaden reed goes over a thousand oh my god here wilson Jaden reed christian watson actually had more than kyle pitts this is so weird this season with better offensive line it almost seems like since we upgraded o-line and Jordan Love got a little better. He opted for his wide receivers more than his tight end. I can think of a lot of theories for why, but honestly, it doesn't matter because Kyle Pitts is so good anyway that he's already kind of where he needs to be. Eight touchdowns for Pitts, eight for Watson, six for Jaden Reed, and 11 for Garrett Wilson. Evenly distributed. Damn, Garrett Wilson. Do we have a shot at MVP? Probably not. Yeah, that's crazy. We led the league in passing yards, and we're not even on the MVP list. Offensive Player of the Year, Brandon Ayuk. Defensive Player of the Year, Aaron Donald. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Earl Ware. Defensive Rookie of the Year, D'Angelo Williams. Best QB is Desmond Ritter. Best running back, Saquon. Wide receivers, Ayuk. O-line, Spinney Sewell. I'm surprised that Garrett Wilson... Okay, What? This can't be right. Garrett Wilson is not even on the best wide receiver list at all. How? Oh, he is. Sorry. I'm actually just brain dead and blind. He was fourth. But still, I'm actually shocked. You led the league in receiving yards and you're fourth in the NFC? Which means there's AFC players in front of you too. That's shocking to me. But I think it's most likely due to touchdowns. Jordan Love was getting touchdowns with everybody. He was picking no favorites. And in the 2024 season, the Niners win the Super Bowl and Brock Purdy is MVP. Oh, Kurt, I'm so sorry. I know you're going to see this. Oh, that's just, that's fucked up is what it is. Defensive Rookie of the Year is D'Angelo Williams, who has... D'Angelo Williams, that's a familiar name. He's now a D-tackle, I suppose. Lamar Jackson wins NFL MVP. Interesting season. And I spoke too soon. We're into free agency. I actually didn't know that this is how dev traits worked, so I'm glad I know now. But I actually had to wait for the season to be fully complete to know if Garrett Wilson got a dev trade upgrade, and he did. So Ryan Kelly was on a one-year deal. I now have absolutely nobody at center. But Garrett Wilson is a superstar, which makes sense. He led the league in receiving. He was supposed to get this. He's got route tech. We'll also go accurate. Acrobat and deep out elite. Do you get deep out elite? He does not get deep out elite. I'm going to give him bruiser. Ah, no, I won't. Route tech, acrobat, and deep in elite. Garrett Wilson is insanely good. He is progressing fast. Although that also meant I had to wait for a regression. Kenny Clark went from X Factor down to superstar, but Jair is a hard 99 now with X Factor. DBs are good for a while here. Uh, Campbell... Went from an 85 to an 82. Quay Walker's only getting better. I was right to think about Preston Smith. Preston Smith is getting really shitty. So 
we either draft an outside linebacker or we draft a center. And then we do the other in free agency. We finished eight and nine. So my draft pick is like 14, 15, 16. And looking in that range, there's a right outside linebacker, Zay Myers. There's a tackle, John Warren. I technically could move him to center. Same with Joshua Beekman. I could move him to center. Another right outside linebacker, Eddie Mumphrey. I would like to sign a linebacker. I'd rather sign a linebacker and draft a center. Free agents available. Damn, Ayuk's in free agency. Is So is Tua. Ayuk's a superstar X Factor. I want an outside linebacker. Unless there's a good center available. You never know. The best center available is a 77. Yeah. I think we draft. We'll draft that. Look at this signing that's available. He's cheap. He's interested in the squad already. He's only 25. Jack Sanborn out of Wisconsin. I love this. He's young. He's going to get better. He's only 25. Give him a player-friendly deal. He'd love to sign with the Packers. Look at that. He'll be with the squad for a while, and he's definitely going to get better. No need to go overboard and overpay on anybody. Let's just, let's just gab the guy. Let's just grab the guy and look at that. We got 22 mil available in salary cap. We can save that for next year just in case we don't go to the playoffs. But I do expect to go to the playoffs in this upcoming season. It's time for the NFL draft. We really didn't move and pick very much, which makes sense. For round one, pick 12. Time to make our selection. We don't need wide receivers. We don't need tight ends. We need a center or a linebacker. There's, oh my God, it's such a deep QB class again. Damn it. Jacob Webster is a top five projected quarterback and he is falling. Look at that A medium, A short. That guy's a beast. Out of USC. I'm sorry I can't take you. Left tackle, John Warren. Right guard, Joshua Beekman. I gotta say, look at the stats here on John Warren. The 22-year-old out of UCLA. He's got the best vertical three cone and 20-yard shuttles. This is a fast, very fast tackle, but it doesn't matter too much. His acceleration, change of direction, and jumping are elite. His strength is good good he has a run b pass a impact a awareness john warren's insane i just need to teach him how to play center and we'll be good i don't know how realistic that is in real life actually moving a tackle to center so maybe i'm cheesing the rebuild a little bit here but he'll definitely be a beast at center he is hidden now as we wanted he's 88 strength oh my god this guy's a monster it's gonna be a hell of a center let's go our next pick is round five because we traded away all these draft picks i'm gonna let the computer take care of that one listen we signed jack sanborn shore up you know that little area with preston smith and then john warren who looks to be an incredible tackle is going to become our new center. And maybe the computer went crazy. Draft recap of the 2025 NFL Draft. Yo, tell me why the computer in the 5th, 6th, and 7th round got all 70 pluses. Nasty. DeMarco Rogers halfback. They got Deontay Smith tight end and Tracy Collins wide receiver. But most important is John Warren, who's a 75 overall. I honestly thought he'd be higher than a 75 overall, but still, that's really good. Hidden Dev is the important thing here, so he's at least star, and we will move him to center. John Warren is our starting center. He actually goes down one overall when he's moved to center. His pass blocking is actually pretty bad. Run blocking is a 79, power is a 70, 82 run block finesse. So this is a run blocking center, but that's okay. The new look, Green Bay Packers are ready to kick off preseason. Jordan Love's an 80. He's not getting up in dev trades, but he should be fine. Oh, we're smoking that NFC North pack through midseason. Packers are six and one. The Bears, Vikings, and Lions aren't even close. We are 100% going to the playoffs. Let's see how the lineup's doing because everybody's killing it. Hey, Warren was a star. We have probably one of the best O-lines in the league with Philbin, Becton, Hardison, Warren, and Jenkins. Kyle Pitts is a 98 with no morale. It's insane. Deontay Smith, our third string tight end, is progressing. How? I don't know. Jordan Love's doing good. AJ Dillon's doing good. Garrett Wilson's a 95 now, and Jaden Reed and Christian Watson seem to be enjoying things. Oh, no. And, I, dude, I forgot to start Jack Sanborn. We're doing this good, and we don't even have the best lineup in because Jack Sanborn is a 77, and he's much better than Preston Smith. It's going to be a cakewalk to the playoffs, boys. GM Ben Kurt wanted a Super Bowl within two to three years. This is year three. So is this our Super Bowl year right now? Oh, 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 oh my God. We almost, like we almost lost our playoff spot. And interestingly enough, Jordan Love, okay, he, 
he has way less passing yards. So he's fifth in the league in passing yards this year, but his touchdown to interception ratio is so much better. 69% completions, all right. 260 yards per game. 104 passer rating, his best. AJ Dillon's probably a little upset that he can't eclipse 1,000 rushing yards, but it's all right. Garrett Wilson regressed. His overall went higher. He got way more touchdowns, but as far as yards go, a lot less. Kyle Pitts is back in the 1,000 club, and Jaden Reed and Christian Watson decrease. Defensively, Devondre Campbell, Quay Walker, Eric Stokes with 104 tackles. Eight TFLs. Five interceptions for Jair. Deshaun Elliott with three. Very nice. 14 sacks for Kenny Clark. Eight for Rashawn Gary. Seven for Devontae Wyatt. Whoa. Nice. Four out of Preston Smith. Two and a half out of Van Ness. Devondre Campbell had one. Our boy Sanborn rocking a big zero. All right, boys. The wild card versus the Panthers. The 89 overall Packers versus the 88 Panthers. They got Shelton Prince. X-Factor DB? What? Through two quarters, it is... Oh, it's 21 to 14. Jordan Love, come on, baby. Yes, 21 to... Dude, this is a high-scoring game. 21 to 21, 28 to 21. Let's go. Keep scoring, Packers. 35 to 21, 28 to 35. Wait a minute. Wait, Panthers have the ball. Fourth and 20. They go for it. They don't get it. All right, Packers just got to close this game out. Carolina has two timeouts left. We lead by seven. That's a monster run. That is not AJ Dillon. That is Lou Nichols the third. Why is Lou Nichols in and not AJ Dillon? I don't know. Chiefs playbook, I guess. This right here is why AJ Dillon never got a thousand rushing yards. Lou Nichol! I don't even know who that is. I literally don't know who that is. But he's in! PAT is up and good. The Panthers do score, dude. That was a high scoring game. Wild card, though. Packers hang on 42 to 35. Sanborn gets an upgrade. Woo! Wild card's in the books. It's on to the divisional. Dude, I feel think we're the greatest 9 and 8 team in history. We're an 89 overall. The Cowboys are an 87 and they're 12 and 5. We do have a weekly award as well. Devondre Campbell. Oh my God, look at his stat line. Seven tackles, an interception, a forced fumble, and he recovered the fumble that he forced. Bryce Young actually gets NFC offense, but doesn't matter because we won. Let's go. It's time for the divisional Packers take on the Cowboys. CeeDee Lamb, Micah Parsons, Zach Prescott. We got Jair, Kyle Pitts. We have the divisional, the NFC Championship, and the Super Bowl. I'll pick back up tomorrow. The run continues. 9-8 and eight Packers versus the 12-5 and five Cowboys. Playing at AT&T Stadium in the divisional round. Ooh, looks like the Cowboys do score first, but we score right back. 7-7. Seven to seven. Cowboys score. We're back on offense. We missed our field goal. Oh, no. Wait, but red zone. 14-14. Cowboys just scored with like four seconds on the clock. 17 to 21. Okay. Okay. Come on. We got to score here. Fourth and two. Got to get that. Yes, we got it. 24 to 21. It's 24 to 28. We have the ball. Cowboys have all three of their timeouts. Jordan Love takes over. Rifles one. Rock. Drop by Musgrave. No, we got to catch that. This is a weird lineup we have in there. Where's Kyle Pitts? Where's Garrett Wilson? Why is Luz? Why is AJ Dillon not in? I'm so confused at the personnel out here. But third and 16. Jordan Love gets sacked. You're kidding me. We scored? How did we get the ball back? Oh my God, I thought we turned it over. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What just happened? We somehow got the ball back and we scored on a pass to Luke Musgrave. Whoa. Oh my God, I was getting ready to sim to the end of this game. I thought it was over. The Cowboys must have instantly turned it over. Oh my God. God. Holy fuck, what? What the fuck? We just kicked the ball out of our... What the fuck? Did anyone see that? We just kicked the ball out of one of our coverage team's arms. What? Dude, I am experiencing Madden glitches that I've never seen. But thanks to that dog shit kick, the Cowboys are taking over from the 45. That is not good. Sack him! That goes down! Cowboys had to use a timeout there. Oh, they still have two. They only need field goal range. Come on. Come on, pass rush. Get home, Kenny! Kenny Clark was so close. He doesn't get home. And they got a first down out of that. Damn. They're not in field goal range yet. They use their second to last timeout. Pressure. Pressure, boys. Also, it doesn't even show Kenny Clark as an X factor. Did he regress to a... Dude, nothing makes sense to me right now. Oh my God, what are they doing? Look at the clock. What are they doing? Are they going for the end zone? Holy shit. I thought they weren't even going to have time to kick the game tying field goal. All right, they're sending it to overtime with this kick right here. Matt LaFleur ices the kicker. This is a huge kick. Huge kick. It should be routine, though. 39-yard field goal. I can't imagine he misses that. He drills it. We're going overtime. Dude, I'm so confused how that 
even happen. I came into the game to see about these substitutions. Why? The Look at the fucking unit that is out here. My backup halfback, no Garrett Wilson, no Kyle Pitts, no Christian Watson, no Jaden Reed. What the fuck is this? When I go into the depth chart, AJ Dillon is starting. Garrett Wilson is starting. My starting tight end is Kyle Pitts. My slot wide receiver is Garrett Wilson. What is going on? Why would this ever be the unit that's in? Hold up. I'm going to go formations, wing tight nasty. It's got Nichols in instead of AJ Dillon. It's got Pearson in instead of Kyle Pitts. It's got Dubes in instead of... I am genuinely so frustrated by this. Why the hell would it ever run this lineup? Does anybody understand? Now, now I'm in the game and I've made the substitutions. Now all my studs are in. Why have they not been playing this entire time? I don't want to cheat either. I'm not, I'm not allowed to come in here and play, but... As soon as I step out, it's going to put in my dog shit lineup again. And look at that. They just subbed in my shitty lineup again. And now Dallas is marching down the field. Ooh, Henry Lamb. Henry Lamb just got an interception in OT. Wait a minute. We could win the game here. But look at this. Look at this dog shit. They, they're automatically putting in my worst players. They've got the backup halfback, all my backup wide receivers, and my backup tight end in. I mean, if we beat the Cowboys with our second unit, I'll be really impressed. Why the hell? Okay, here we go. Garrett Wilson and Kyle Pitts are in. They're in that formation I suggested. And we're going to run it to AJ Dillon. So it appears my substitution did something. All we got to do is kick a field goal to win the game. I think we still win the game here. But look at the unit again. They got the backup fucking half back in. What is this? I don't have auto depth chart reorder. I just checked my depth chart. I've got all my starters in. What am I watching? Fucking Lou Nichols and all these backups in the most important game of the season. Why would that ever be the case? Hey, hey, I can cry all I want, but this is the game winning field goal right here. We pin this and we go to the NFC Championship. Drill it. He drills it. Will Lutz. Ice in his veins. Hell of a field goal. Hell of a field goal. Wait, what? How's the game not over? We each had an opportunity on offense and I kicked a field goal. Shouldn't the game be over? Dude, this is so buggy. It's not even funny. We do get the win. So it counted the win for us. Is this a progressive fatigue thing? Guys, I just looked it up. Some people think it might be progressive fatigue. I'm turning progressive fatigue off. Hopefully that fixes this. Oh my God, we had the second unit in there. No wonder they were struggling. No wonder we went to overtime. We don't have our star players out there. Jordan Love had a spectacular game. 374 yards, three touchdowns. But look at this. Lou Nichols got 11 carries. AJ Dillon got one. AJ Dillon is my starting running back. Receiving. Do Dobbs isn't even in my fucking lineup. He's my fourth string. Jaden Reed got one catch. It was a nuke for a touchdown. Musgrave got four. And Kyle Pitts is virtually unused. Where's Garrett Wilson? Garrett Wilson didn't get a single... What is going on? How could that ever happen? Oh my God. I'm pissed off, man. We did all this to make Garrett Wilson awesome. We don't even use him. Whatever. Hey, it's time for the conference championship. Hopefully, what I just did fixed it. I am praying it did. The NFC championship is against the Atlanta Falcons, and we are the Green Bay Packers. We know that this game is historically pretty tough for us. Uh, a weekly award goes to Henry Lamb. My second round pickup with 11 tackles and a game-winning interception. Huge. And Jordan Love got player of the week as well. Henry Lamb probably got enough. Oh no, James Bartow, another. Another, another young guy gets an upgrade there. I just figured out why all my starters got subbed out. Uh, progressive fatigue is broken. I should have turned it off when I started this league. So for some reason, the game is auto-subbing out all of my starters. So what happens if I just fair sim it? Because when I was fair simming in the regular season, it definitely had my starters in. I'm going to the Pro Bowl. I made a save point in case this is absolutely horrendous. Okay, so we won. Let me. We just need to see the player stats now. Jordan Love threw 224 passing yards, no touchdowns? My backup quarterback Parker Allen came in and threw a touchdown. No, it's still used. It's still used my backups. Look at this. Dobbs, Jaden Reed, Musgrave. It's not using my starters. And there's nothing I can do about it. They're at the top of the depth chart. And I can't use my starters. Somehow the seven seed Indianapolis Colts make the Super Bowl. They beat the Chiefs. This is a really cool Super Bowl. But wow, I'm actually really frustrated by this. I hate doing this for a rebuild, but I think my only option here is to play the Super Bowl. I don't see another way to do this. The 90 overall Packers taking on the 89 overall Indianapolis Colts. I really do apologize, guys. I had absolutely no idea about this bizarre glitch. Garrett Wilson's an X Factor. Wait a minute. Holy shit. I'll make sure that for the next franchise I do, progressive fatigue will be off. Honestly, 90% of this rebuild we did without that affecting us. But here we get into the third season playoffs and it's decided to sub out all of our star players. Why would that ever be something I want? Eric Stokes got superstar. Devontae Wyatt is star. I think the coolest part of this is Garrett Wilson is now superstar. 
star X Factor. I'm gonna give him double me. I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him deep out and deep in elite. He's a stud. I'm not gonna let this ruin it. We're gonna play out the Super Bowl, even though normally I would want to sim this. But who knows? Maybe when we hop into this game here, maybe my starters will be it. Let's go, Packers. I'm gonna play only the moment. So if I come in here and look at this opening drive on defense, and we look at the the lineup that's in, look at this. So you're supposed to be Sean Gary. You're supposed to be Kenny Clark. You're supposed to be Lucas Van Ness. Uh, you're actually correct. You're the one guy who is correct. And I didn't even get my substitutions off. And now we're running out here with this 70 overall line. That is really frustrating. I mean, it doesn't even make any sense. When would you ever be in a playoff game using all of your bench players because you're trying to manage fatigue? Fatigue for what? It's the fucking Super Bowl. This is the only goal. Opening drive in the Super Bowl, the Colts settle for a field goal. On offense, we have some weird substitutions. There's no Garrett Wilson, but Jaden Reed and Watson are in, and then our backup halfback is in. Backup halfback is wide open. Lou Nichols. Hey! Hey! Now it's red zone alert, and in this set, as you can see, I have nobody useful in so we're just gonna make something up here i'm gonna go out to a i'm gonna go to luke musgrave the interesting thing for me here is there's no way dude the more that i think about it at the start of this season we went six and one and then we closed out the season nine and eight what if what if these guys came out at about mid-season and that's why we struggled so much that would make so much sense to me i just gotta make sure that progressive fatigue is off every single time i play i'm gonna go Ooh. We're going for it. Looks like a bum is going to get a touchdown here, potentially. Jordan Love's going to scramble. Was just about to get sacked, and I'm going to throw that one away. My immersion is fully ruined. I'll say that. Musgrave. Big stiff arm. Hey. Oh, get home, Kyle Pitts. Yes, sir. AJ Dillon or Garrett Wilson will go. AJ Dillon. He's bouncing around. Lou Nichols, the backup, is in. But I'm going to give him this opportunity. Hey! He picks up the first. Now we're in no huddle. We're gonna run the same thing. Let's go. Oh! He broke it! The backup, Lou Nichols. Dude, they're bringing me in to kick a 64-yard field goal with Will Lutz. Holy shit. This is a nuke. Colin Oppenheimer. Come on, baby! No! Oh, she goes! Oh, no. Hey! Kenny Clark! An ability. Inside stuff. What a huge play. Big play! No! Oh my god, what a laser. Finds him in the back of the end. That was nasty. All right, and the sim actually got us in nice position to tie this game up. Let's see who's where. Okay, halfback. No, 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 don't float, Nichols. Don't do that. Who's there? Oh, Kyle Pitts. I like it. I like it! What a catch. Oh, don't force it, but Musgrave. Ooh, awkward. I'm giving Garrett Wilson just a hitch right here. Oh my god, Musgrave! Not again! <laughs> Musgrave is having the game of his career. Colts score. We're back on offense. It's 17 to 17, 39 seconds and three minutes in the Super Bowl. I really apologize, guys. I wish this could be a sim, but I just, that was a very unanticipated glitch. Either way, Garrett Wilson clears, breaks a tackle. But damn, that DB was fast. First and 10. I'm going to try and get Kyle Pitts out of bounds here. That's, that's best case scenario. Oh, it's not really there. Oh, this is risk. It's risk. It's risk. What? I said it was risky. I, I don't know how he came down with it. But now we got to watch. They have one timeout. They have so much field to cover. There's just no way. I think the Super Bowl is going to go into overtime. But as I'm watching, I'm, I'm looking at 70 overall bum. Absolute bozo. How is this team even in the bowl? Although I think I'm noticing Jair. Or is that Eric Stokes? 23. The Colts just run it out. They want to go into overtime. Oh, good defense. It's third and seven. Oh, Richardson misses the throw. They got a punt. Little play action here. Kyle Pitts open in the flats. That's my boy. That's why I want to have the ball in the open field. Musgrave. Dude, must that little leak out from Musgrave is just such a lethal option. Second and 10. I'll go down to Dylan. That ball knocked out. Third and 10. Kyle Pitts torched his man. Lou Nichols, no, it's underthrown. He got it anyway. Oh, that was so underthrown. I was trying to send him to the back of the end zone. It's only right that I let the super sim take over. And you know what? They're actually in a formation that has Kyle Pitts in. So first and 10, it's a handoff to AJ Dillon. He'll go for two yards. Second and goal in the Super Bowl. All we need is a field goal to win. And we're in five wide. I swear to God, Jordan Love. Jordan Love sacked. 
just lost 14 yards for no reason. And we're coming out running another play. Lou Nichols is in the backfield. Not a single one of our starters are out there. Jordan loves... You're sh actually shitting me. You just brought that field goal from a 25-yard game winner to a 49-yard game winner. And now I'm going to watch you kick it. I swear to God, if we miss this, dude, I think I might be done with rebuilds. Dude, Lutz. 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 Game winner. Super Bowl. He drills it. He's clutch like that. Hey, and the Lombardi trophy. I don't even get to see the walkout, do we? Because it's all glitched. The winners of Super Bowl 60 are the Green Bay Packers over the Indianapolis Colts. It didn't, it honestly didn't happen how we wanted it to, but Jordan Love with 303 yards, a touchdown and interception. Lou Nichols with 32 yards. Kyle Pitts had 7 for 82 because I stepped in. Garrett Wilson had 1 for 29. We did what our GM asked, and that is the most important part. I also decided to sim to next season just to see what the team's going to look like after that Super Bowl run. Jordan Love is still normal, Dev, but our tight end, Deontay Smith, went up to superstar. So we have two amazing tight ends now. Uh, not like any of them will play, of course, because the game really wants to start Luke Musgrave. Christian Watson. And Garrett Wilson ends as a 99 overall superstar X Factor. That's awesome. So that was an insanely good trade. Uh, Campbell regresses in dev trait. Kenny Clark regresses. Eric Stokes is a superstar now, which is pretty awesome. Deshaun Elliott, Henry Lamb. Somehow Eric Stokes is our starting free safety and our starting corner. This game is just broken. It's just broken. Jordan Love is Super Bowl MVP. It's actually so dope. Desmond Ritter got NFL MVP. All right, boys. I appreciate you guys watching. As always, I'll make sure this is resolved next time around. And I will see you guys in the next rebuild. Peace.